let's just sew whatever hey everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video we are going to be making the oakley backpack from i think so patterns this is such a cute little bag we did make some changes um especially on this little piece here you'll see it kind of hurts my brain um, but i ended up adding two pieces of lining fabric so that there is a finished lining on the inside of there and so that this edge isn't raw edged you'll you'll see why um, the only interfacing I used in this pattern is Decoville Heavy along the bottom panel. Um, one layer of woven interfacing on this cotton front piece, two layers of cotton woven interfacing on the back, or woven interfacing. Um, and then just waterproof canvas for the lining and vinyl for the rest of it. I really enjoyed making this little bag. We omitted the zippered pocket. I did cut it, um, but as I was putting it together, I'm like, it's just too small to need it. Uh, we also added this back overlay and uh, yeah let's go ahead and get started on sewing it. If you're not already subscribed I would love it if you would um, and leave a comment down below let me know if you would make this pattern or if you wouldn't. Okay we are going to start with our three lengths of zipper tape. I have one that is 6 inches, one that is a little over 10 inches, and one that is 14 inches. We're just going to be adding a single zipper pull to each zipper. I am using a zipper jig. You could use a fork. A lot of people use their hands to attach it. Whatever works for you. We are going to start on that front pocket. Nope, that's my zipper. Let's see, bottoms, side panels, flap, here we go. Here are those front pocket pieces and then I wanna make sure that I grab my front panel as well. and my markings for that because we're going to be adding a magnetic snap. So let's go ahead and start by adding our zipper tabs to the six inch zipper. Just using about a three eighths inch seam allowance. If you want to, you can add lining to this. I am not super worried about it. Gonna open that up and top stitch. All right, and then we have two of the lower pieces, two of the upper pieces here. So we're gonna add double-sided tape where the zipper gets attached. The last pocket like this I made, um, which was on the sapphire backpack, I'm not sure if that one has released yet or not, might not have. Um, it was a vinyl pocket, so it was quite bulky, especially for a domestic machine. Got 
that taped together and I'm gonna sew as close to the zipper teeth zipper teeth as possible. The mat and top stitch. My stitch length is at about a 4.5, which feels good. Especially working with a cotton fabric. You don't want to use anything too wide. So we've added the exterior to the top of the zipper and now we're adding the lining to the top of the zipper, making sure the lining sides are touching right sides together. And then open that up. Press that seam open and top stitch. Okay, and now for this piece, we actually want to put the wrong side of the lining facing up. Wow, that's a lot to trim down. My goodness. We're gonna center it best as we can. Is that right? No, that feels wrong. Let's read the pattern. Place the lining front pocket lower piece, okay. All right, so it says to use this piece to kind of trace out. So if I flip this, okay. But then if I flip it, because hmm. I want these to touch. So I'll do it this way, okay. Great, glad we talked. But I feel like I did it this way last time and it was wrong. But it should be right. All right, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna start at the bottom here. We're gonna walk in and sew around the shape. leave ourselves a decent opening back stitch then we'll trim the rest away
Boy, does that, that is wrong. That is very wrong. Dang it. <laughs> There's no way it could be correct. Crap. Get lining piece out of these. I'm doing great. Okay, let's try this again. So we're gonna put right sides together here. And I'm just gonna come in a little tiny bit from the other stitch lines. Let's trim it again. Luckily this waterproof canvas is fairly thin, but still. So I'm turning the part with the lining and exterior facing each other. I really don't think it's possible to make this with just one piece and not see the wrong side of your fabric in that pocket. And we'll just massage that down, making sure to poke out the corners as best you can without poking through the fabric and opening up the seam. It's such a cute little zipper pouch though. All right, so since this is all fabric, I'm gonna press this really quick, just using a bit of steam. It'll help it lay nice and flat. And then I wanted to add this woven label I guess I could have done it in between the layers. But I didn't. I also need to go get a magnetic snap. I forgot about it. Yeah, super cute. Gonna lay that down into place. Make sure it's centered and straight, and we'll top stitch it down.
Or you could even keep it as like a slip pocket if you wanted. Let's go ahead and add the magnetic snaps before we move on to anything else. I already have my placement marked out on the flap here. I'm going to grab my washers. Instead of keeping my washers with my magnetic snaps, I've been enjoying leaving them just at my machine. I find it so much easier to just grab it while I'm here because I always end up either losing one or forgetting one so that's nice it's my little tip for the day I have a scrap of fair fuse self adhesive on the flap where I'll be placing the magnetic snap I didn't want to add a ton of interfacing to the flap so I just wanted that little strip there to help reinforce that magnetic snap and I'm using the 18 millimeter ultra thin snaps that I carry on my website. Got that one. And then we can mark out placement for this one. And this vinyl is pretty sturdy, so I'm not too worried about reinforcing this piece. Okay, and then we're going to sew around the flap. And then so that the flap sits nicely, we're just going to trim at those corners. And then turn it. And then massage those seams down and flatten. Hold in place with some clips. And they added a nameplate to the flap. And we'll see if I want to do that after I top stitch. I'll just make sure I don't close the flap yet. So stitch length is still at 4.5. We'll just go really careful around the corners. Okay, so deciding, I think I might put the nameplate just kind of right there. 
right under the flap and I think that would be super cute. So I'm going to grab my ruler. Find the center. Move it up to be like just under the flap. Make sure it's face up. Yeah, okay. I'm always so worried about that because knowing me, I would do it. Super cute. So we'll go ahead and set this aside for now. We're going to work on the back panel. Inside. So we have two back straps. We have a grab handle and a back overlay. I added the overlay separately. So I'm gonna grab my hardware. Two D rings, or two square rings, two sliders. Let's prep. All of this using double sided tape. Just taping down the center, except on the overlay. And this half inch wide tape that I'm using is from Weft and Warp Co. I don't think, well, it's probably available now. The straps are cut to the width suggested in the pattern and the length, so they're going to be one inch wide by 40 inches long, and they're cut to four inches by 40. I feel like this small of a backpack could handle three quarter inch wide backpack straps though because it is so small. I'm worried the one inch wide are going to feel a little too big. Okay, let's go ahead and work on handle strap connection. I'm going to do that little faux rolled handle. Those are my favorite on backpacks. I'm just going to start stitching about an inch and a half, two inches in, and stop stitching two and a half to one and a half inches away from the edge. If it's not even, which it isn't, I will trim it to be so. Oop, got it. And then for our little strap connectors at the bottom, these were cut to two inches wide by about two and a half inches long. And I'm just folding them in half so that they're one inch wide. Top stitching along either side, and then I'm going to cut it in half and slide those D rings through. Nope, square rings. They're square rings. I think the pattern says D rings, but 
I'm not about to put something circular on something that needs to be square. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying. Okay. So these are ready to go. Need to work on these straps. So for the pattern, it has you do D rings in the top seam. I'm just going to put the backpack straps directly into that top seam. No, not into the top seam, into a handle overlay. Um, I may have mentioned that in the cutting video. I think the cutting video for this one worked. I was having microphone issues. I'd love to know your feedback on the microphone. Are you liking the way it sounds? Does it sound terrible? I do the bare minimum of editing, which I'm sure you all know by now. So I don't know how it sounds throughout. I, I can't listen to myself talk all day, even longer, I should say. All right, I'm gonna switch the stitch length to about a five. That's just gonna help this go faster. One, done. Just throw that on the ground, don't worry about it. We'll find it later. The shape of this backpack reminds me of the Carvey mini backpack from Bagstock Designs, but this definitely is smaller. Well, I don't know, can I say that I know it's smaller? I've only made the Carvey at 110%. <laughs> So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, I don't know. This whole time I've been like holding my breath waiting for the bobbin to run out. Okay. So these are going to be placed just a little over an inch from the outside edge. I would say I'm lining up the square ring an inch from the outside edge. And then let's get some tape. I'm gonna place this right about there. And this is just going to reduce the bulk on the back seam, adding this little overlay. Okay. 
Make sure you stick it down, because I definitely didn't. There we go. So we're going to center the handle. Let's do like a little bit of an inch apart. Squish it down flat. Oh my gosh, stop, it's so cute. <laughs> All right, and these are gonna go up and over. I have the folded edge. There we go. Like that, and we're gonna angle it just like that. I'm not worried about adding my side adjusters just yet. We can do that at the very end when we finish that strap off. So I'm gonna fold down the top edge about half an inch on that overlay. And then we'll just press that down over top. It's about an inch away from the top edge, which should create a nice top seam. I'm just pressing all of those layers down. Bob and got me. Bob and got me. Okay. I knew it was close. All that we are adding to the inside is a zippered pocket with an overlay, but I almost feel like this backpack is so small that you really don't even need that. But it does get turned through a pocket, so. Going nice and slow at the bottom edge so I don't get any jumping with the layers different. Okay, and then I'm going to stitch over the top one more time, making sure everything is out of the way, just to help reinforce all of those straps without perforating the strap. And then we'll trim off the excess. I had a screwdriver sitting on the other table with a magnet attached to it, trying to magnetize the bit. And I just threw it on the ground. As I do. So, just trying to help magnetize it. Let's baste these as well. Well, I can go ahead and add the bottom panel um, wherever it may be. I added Decaville Heavy to the bottom panel. And just make sure that we start and stop about three eighths of an inch from the outside edge.
Then I am going to top stitch this for a little bit extra security. If you do this, you need to start and stop from the outer edge, unlike what I did here. That's okay, though. It's not too terrible. But yeah, we won't be able to add the side panel as easily. We need that not stitched all the way. All right, let's go ahead and attach the flap. This is going to be placed centered at the top. With the lining side facing up like that. So when it closes, it'll flap over. And I really, really like that I didn't interface the flap super flexible, bendy, and it won't be fighting against being closed. So that'll be good. So we can actually finish the exterior super quick. Let's do it. So laying the bottom panel on the exterior front, starting at the edge of the interfacing backstitch, coming forward and stopping at the edge of the interfacing. And then if you top stitch along the bottom, again, make sure you start and stop in the right spot. So I'll start over here. And I love that it's just a super fun little pop of color with that top stitching. You could even add purse feet to this pattern if you wanted. That would certainly look adorable and be very practical. All right, let's add our side panels. And I did not add any interfacing to these side panels. So we're going to line it up at the top. And the edge. And only sew down until about three quarters of an inch, or three eighths, I'm sorry. And then we'll stop. And we'll grab the other side and repeat.
and then we'll square the bottom by bringing those layers together, clipping in place, and sewing from one stitch line to the next to the bottom. And then we'll trim at the corner to reduce the bulk. And then you can just check really quick that there are no holes in the corner. Looks pretty good. Oh my gosh, it's so little. And that's what it'll look like when it's finished. I can't. So just repeat those steps to the other side. and then finish on the last side. We'll move on to our lining after that and add the zippered pocket. And then we have to, well, there's a zippered panel at the top of the bag, but I'm kind of thinking this bag is too small to really need it. So I think I'm actually gonna leave it off. It's gonna make it go, uh, take way less time also, which I'm kind of here for. Not sure why this panel is so much longer, but we will trim it away so it's not super worrisome. Just gonna start at that stitch line and end at the next. And trim away the excess. So I'm gonna turn this right side out just cause I really wanna look at it. And that'll help me kind of gauge if it really needs the zipper closure or not as well. So poking out the corners will let you check to make sure everything is caught. There's no holes. You don't want those to break down over time. Yeah, I'm gonna say this bag is way too small to need a closure at the top other than that magnetic snap, but oh my goodness. It's so little and cute. All right, we're gonna flip it right back. Right back, inside out. and speed through the lining. Adding the overlay 
This is such a tiny little zipper. Um, so I think I'm going to leave the bottom panel not attached in one area in the bottom of the bag so that we can turn it through way easier. I'm gonna add this two and a half inches centered from the top of the lining. So you're gonna have about an inch on either side with the overlay size that we cut. And then my zipper, just gonna sew that on. So I've attached it and then sewn it down, adding double-sided tape along that, sewing the overlay down into place, stitch length at 4.5. I find that to be my preferred length for top stitching items into place like this. It always seems to work out as far as the thread and needle landing in the perfect spot. open. Love light gold and blue together. I think they look so pretty. And rose gold and blue are one of my favorite combos as well. All right, and then we'll sew that in place. And this is why I like to leave my zipper so much longer. I can just sew freely without it being in the way. Just make sure you bring it back in. And then we are turning the bag 
through the opening in the pocket. Just need to go. Um, so we are going to flip this, turn that up. And then sew the sides closed. And I'll we'll open this and trim down our excess zipper tape here. Okay, so this is the side I'm going to leave open, but I do want to baste it in place. Well, sew it in place just a little bit. So we're going to start at 3 8 and just sew a little bit and then okay. oh bottom got me no no okay so let's go ahead and attach our side panel Yeah, this, this is going to be so much nicer without that zipper along the top. I was just going to be one more thing to have to worry about. And like there's absolutely nothing wrong with adding the zipper panel. Um, I just think the bag is too small to really necessitate it. Start and stop, three-eighths of an inch. Mark out those lines if you need to. And then we can connect to the bottom. And then trim down at the corner. We're going to flip this lining side out. This is going to be our turn hole down at the bottom. Just go ahead and poke out those corners 
making sure there's no holes. Not everything looks good. Like I said, we'll unzip the zipper pocket. And then I like the zipper pocket to be facing towards the back of the bag. So we're gonna stick that in here. And line up the side seams. I'm gonna go ahead and nest these seams. The bag is a little too small to worry about opening them up. So I'm just pushing them in opposite directions so that there isn't any excess bulk in one spot. It's just kind of evenly distributed everywhere. And then if you're using a domestic, I would definitely kind of like take the table of your machine off and use the cylinder, cylindric portion to help you get around that easier. We're gonna sew around the top with about a half inch seam allowance, maybe three eighths to half an inch. And then just double check that you've caught all the seams there. And that you're past your basting stitch for your flap. Looks good. So we should be good to turn it. So the best way to do this is to grab your lining from your exterior and then grab the bottom of your exterior first. Because if you're trying to grab at the lining to pull that through, well that's towards the end of the hole and you're gonna have trouble getting everything else through too when all of that is in the way and it can't come out until the bottom of the bag comes out. Not too bad, especially since we didn't over interface it. We just used a nice sturdy vinyl that has a bit of slouch to it. So it's nice and soft. And we're just gonna kind of gently tug at the top seam. One, to separate the layers, but two, also to make sure that we caught everything that there isn't gonna be fraying over time in any spot. And then go ahead and push out those corners because we're not gonna be able to access them any other time. Okay. So 
So then we'll pull our zipper pocket back out and grab our lining through there. close that up. I'm going to come in just a little past my initial stitch line so that there isn't any perforating. I can stick that back in there. Yeah, the zipper closure on this would feel so silly because it's such a small opening. Like, nah. So cute. Little flat. So squishy and yet retains its shape. Really nice. Let's go ahead and add the slide adjusters. Honestly, I'm just scared to top stitch. I think my bobbin's out. So we're gonna slide it all the way through to the top. And make sure that this isn't twisted, but leave yourself a decent sized loop. Slide it through the bottom square ring. And then go back up towards the top and back under through the bottom. So you definitely want a nice wide mouth slider. I'm just going to use rivets there because that's eight layers of vinyl. Like, we don't need to be trying to sew through that. Not that it wouldn't go on this machine, but still. It'll just be cleaner. All right, so slide it through under the slide adjuster. Make sure there's no twisting, but you leave a nice size loop through the bottom of the square ring, back up through the top, and then the top of your slider, move the slider up, and then go under it. Oh my goodness. So cute. All right, let's let's top stitch. Let's do it. Let's check the bobbin. No, we would not have made it. There's no way. All right, that's fine. I'm gonna use this dark blue. So you could act absolutely flip this inside out if you wanted. I think I think I can do this no problem. Just 
just go really slow over the height difference of the gusset or side panel, whatever you want to call it. And if you need to, add a little scrap of vinyl under your foot to help with the height and to make sure it doesn't scratch the vinyl. This one is pretty resilient, but if you try hard and believe in yourself, you can definitely nick the vinyl. And then I'm pushing this seam on itself to make sure I'm catching the lining as well. I can feel all the layers I'm sewing through. And then rearrange. If you need to stop sewing, make sure your needle is in and that you don't shift everything too much. Make sure you're only sewing through the layers you need to. And that's it. We're going to rivet those straps on, but we're done. I did not sew the zippered pocket shut. I usually try to do that first, and I didn't. So let's do that. <laughs> So cute. 